Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start off with some cool speculation as to Sony's State of Play conference for this month. So obviously, the one that's happening this month is going to be the final one of 2019, and it has the potentiality to be a pretty interesting one. Now, Sony has announced that it's going to be taking place in just a few days on December the 10th, so not going to be long until we find out exactly what they have in store for us. Now, they haven't really said anything at all about what they have to share with us. They have said, quote, We've got around 20 minutes of new game reveals, release date announcements, new gameplay footage, PlayStation Worldwide Studios updates, and more. And it probably bears repeating. Don't expect any updates related to our next-gen plans in this episode. You can watch the show, or you can watch live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So, that's all they've said. They've just squashed any potential speculation that we might see any inkling for the PS5. I wasn't really expecting it, to be honest. That's going to be next year that we'll see some real concrete information about what the console looks like, what, how much it might cost, etc. But that hasn't stopped other speculation from happening, of course, because Sony has updated their State of Play YouTube playlist and their Ghost of Tsushima playlist. So we might finally get some more information or trailer or a release date for this game, which I'm actually really looking forward to. I'm a sucker for this sort of time period and setting, so definitely going to be checking this one out, at least if it looks good in the trailers. It looks promising in the one they released already. So fingers crossed we'll see it. But there's also 20 minutes, they said, of, of new game reveals and release date announcements. What about the Resident Evil 3 remake. There was speculation for a while that we would be seeing this remake at the Game Awards, but Jeff Keighley has put water over those flames because he's confirmed that this will not be at the Game Awards. So, will we see a teaser at the State of Play? I think there's a reasonable chance of that, but I don't think we're going to see anything significant. It's probably just going to be a teaser with no gameplay because it's pro it's not going to be out until next year at least. Probably maybe even the year after. It depends how far deep they are into the development stage. They might be further into it than I expect and it's going to be a bunch of gameplay, but I doubt it. It's My guess is teaser and then at E3 or some other event next year we will see actual gameplay, kind of like we saw with Resident Evil 2. So, what else do you think we'll see? 20 minutes they've got to fill, and obviously these trailers can go on for a couple of minutes each, but still, that's of quite a bit that we could potentially learn. Anyway, let's move on, shall we, to Qualcomm. So what we have is just a bit of an announcement from Qualcomm, nothing to do with their ongoing legal proceedings. We have an announcement for the Snapdragon 8C and 7C processors, and we actually know a fair bit about what improvements they're bringing to the table. For the 7C, we do see a bit of an upgrade versus the previous entry-level devices, as it has a 25% boost in system performance and up to twice the battery life versus competing platforms. We see an octa-core opt Qualcomm Cairo 468 CPU and Adreno 618 GPU, but the more interesting one is the 8C platform, which is a more advanced 7nm based platform, which has 30% of performance boost versus the Snapdragon 850, and it has the Qualcomm AI engine, which has six tops to accelerate machine learning applications as well as other applications as well. Now it is worth mentioning of course that the 7C does also have the Qualcomm AI engine and it has five tops per performance for this AI acceleration. Now to finish this topic off I do have a bit of a statement here from Alex Kutazian whose name I really hope I pronounced correctly, the Senior Vice President and General Manager and Mobile of Qualcomm Technologies. And he said, quote, Qualcomm Technologies, innovation in smartphones and connectivity place the power of your desktop PC in your phone. Now the phone is returning the favour by bringing light, thin, always on, always connected, all day battery life experiences to your PC. The mobile first consumer wants an experience on par with a smartphone and we have the innovation, the inventions and the technology to enable this experience for customers across price points. Now, unfortunately, we don't know any more specs other than what I've already said. We do know some performance boost numbers, as I've said, as well as some specs for the 7C platform. But other than that, a little light on spec information, unfortunately. But it is what it is. That's the information that they've chosen to share at the moment. But let's move on to a quick um, 
a bit of an update for TSMC next. So just the other day I was talking about their 5NM process and how we're going to be seeing Zen 4 5NM products launching in 2021. And well, we now have the news thanks to Digitimes and of course you can find their article linked in the description below this video that their 3NM process is on track to deliver in 2022. And this was confirmed by the firm's senior vice president. Now, I just want to point out that this is pretty crazy pace because they actually plan to deliver 3NM in 2023 so they are insanely ahead at the moment so we'll see the first wave of products built using this sometime around the end of 2022 but still they're ahead tsmc continues to be on an absolute tear so we're going to finish things up with some very weird news from intel regarding 22nm and yes i did just say 22 now obviously we all know all about their 14nm supply issues, it has caused Intel some problems and obviously it has been affecting their companies that they work with as well which has led to recent comments from Dell basically stating that they are at least considering moving over to AMD for their processors which would be huge if that actually happens of course. Now. Considering it and we're actually doing it are worlds apart as I said in the video that I discussed it at the time But still just kind of refreshing you on the impact that their 14nm supply issues are having and obviously we are expecting this to continue until Late next year. I think is the most recent update from off the top of my head so what we have is an article from computerbase.de. Now I've linked this source in the description below this video. Forgive any grammar errors, this is Google translated. Um, I am currently learning German, actually, but it's nowhere near good enough to, to read this without translating it, unfortunately. So, what do we actually have? Well, we have a product change notification. It basically states that an old 22NM processor that has actually been discontinued is being reintroduced to the to a new roadmap. So the quote from the article reads, quote, Intel R Pentium processor G3420, 3M cache, 3.2 gigahertz, FC LGA 12C, tray PCN 117291-01, product discontinuance, end of life, reason for revision, cancelling this product discontinuance completely, new roadmap decision, and enabling the product once again. So, this is most likely not for us as consumers, because why would you go with a 22nm processor, you know, Pentium G3420, over, you know, a Coffee Lake or Coffee Lake refresh processor if you're going to go with an Intel one. So this is most likely just for OEMs, only to try and alleviate the impacts that the 14nm supply issues is actually having on these companies. And apparently Intel's customers have until May 26, 2020 to put in their orders for this new, well I say new, this new revision I suppose you should say, with the last orders going out on December the 3rd. Now unfortunately Intel have yet to comment on this particular topic, um, tomshardware.com, which have also covered this, did reach out to them for comments. That's actually where I initially saw this um, computerbase.de article link, so thank you as well to them. Um, unfortunately, they have yet to reply. I would be curious to see their response to this, what reason they give. They're most likely not going to say that it's to do with the 14NM supply issues, but that has to be the reason. I don't see any other reason why they would discontinue a product that was discontinued so long ago. We'll see if this makes an impact, I guess, on uh, the OEMs and see if perhaps it stops potential companies from leaving or... I don't know. Um, just a quick thing, sorry. Oh, and just one thing that I actually forgot to mention after that computerbase.de quote. Um, this processor was actually discontinued in 2015, not 2013. I will add a note... Um, in text but I just wanted to also say verbally that that is the case but regardless of the year it was discontinued it's still a long time ago that this has just been you know collecting dust in a back office somewhere and now Intel reviving it just like help has well help us save us from ourselves and it's like oh I don't know man I'll try it I've got a bit of you know, arthritis in the old bones, I could be getting my walking stick out, but yeah, you, you get my point. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.